Hey friends, Panteke Nuga here with another Kunark Guide video. In this video, I will go over one of my favorite key quests, the Key to Charsis, also known as Howling Stones. The Howling Stones was built by the once great Venral Sathir, though only his ancient partner remains. Drusula Sathir, along with plenty of other haunts and horrific creatures, await you within Charsis. The experience, rewards, and dangers are all great within these halls. Let's claim the key to this ancient pit. We will start at the outpost of Furion Ave. You can catch the boat to Firion Ave from Butcher Block Mountains. Many more good aligned races will choose to sail to Firion Ave than evil aligned. Evil aligned may be killed if caught within sight of the guards, though you may be able to jump ship early before you're spotted. We exit Firion Ave to Ixar Ruins and a river. Follow this river to Lake of Ill Omen. Beware of the arachnids, as some will see through invisibility. In Lake of Ill Omen, we continue down the river to the lake. This zone is popular with some players for gaining experience at lower to mid levels. Find the lake and follow the lake to the right. I divert from the route to the first part of the key to show you the flooded city of Vexar. Vexar may be available on your server, though is not available on the Project 1999 server. The city is still visible and there are some creatures to slay outside, including a mob for a different key quest. Follow the lake around. A map can help you find the entrance to the Sarnak Fortress. I like to look for a familiar rock wall formation to my right. I recognize this as the entrance to the fortress. Hidden underneath these steps is a tunnel. The tunnel is a labyrinth. You want to get across to the other end that is directly ahead of you, though not all paths lead to the great hall that we seek. Follow the path I take or you can find maps on the wiki. Within the Great Hall are many busy Sarnaks and the Chancellor Dizok. The Chancellor is wielding the first half of the Howling Stones key. Slay it and claim the Jade Choctai prod. You will give this prod away for the quest, though some may choose to wield it for its power. This weapon was originally able to be wielded by most melee classes. It is later patched to be shaman only. This half of the key quest is also a tradable item. It will be valuable for trade for quite some time as the Chancellor respawns once every two hours. Now let's find the other half of the key quest. For the second half of the key, we will start in the over there at an outpost. Evil aligned races may choose to take the barge from Oasis. The barge will take you to the treacherous sea of Tamoris Deep. The island the barge will leave you at has another ship that will take you to the over there. The location I'm showing now may just look like a zone wall. This is what many of us call Hammer Hill. There is a quest item that allows teleportation to this spot. It's highly sought after and recommended to obtain. You can find more information about the worker sledge mallet on the wiki. The over there is quite large. I stopped briefly to show the zone entrance to Skyfire Mountains, and then again to show the zone line to Frontier Mountains. Our destination is the city of Kesora, and I am showing one of the many routes you may take to get there. Zone into Worstless Woods. In this video, I choose to run through Cabalus. I believe all races but Ixar are killed on sight by the Ixar guards without some faction work. This is not too much of a problem as the guards and most of the citizens within do not see through invisibility. No matter your race or alignment, you may take a shortcut through Cabalus with an invisibility spell. If you do not cast spells, you may pick up invisibility potions for 10 platinum pieces at any major city. It is recommended to have a few on you at all times as they can be very useful. Taking a butt clenching stroll through Cabalus can save a lot of time. Let's quickly run through the city into the fledgling Ixar zone of Field of Bone, one of the greatest new character zones available in the classic era.
We pause for a moment outside the zone to Kesora. As this is a city, you are able to bind yourself and others here. Maybe this tip is useful to you, as from here you're not too far from Lake of Ill Omen, City of Mist, or even Sebelus. Kesora is a very tricky zone to navigate. There are fall traps and lots of twists and turns. To be honest, I know the path to our next target, but I don't know the way back out. Much like I mentioned in my old Sebelus video, I suggest having an escape plan. An item that allows you to port out could prove useful here. We come to Church Ruins. The second half of the Charse's key quest is the Zalgosian Fang. Unlike the Jade Chalk Dai Prod, this piece is not tradable with others. To spawn the vampire Ixar Zalgaz, you must slay the placeholder at the pulpit. I explore a bit to give you an idea of all the dangers lurking about. Zalgaz will always come with the two undead on either side. Also I believe many of the mobs in this area can heal. Be wary of this, as these can complicate things. Zalgaz has a different respawn timer than the rest of the zone. He has a timer of 30 minutes with a placeholder. I used some tricks to spawn him quickly for this video and there were 4 placeholders total before his spawn. That would take about 2 hours. Thankfully, he can drop multiple quest fangs. It is time for the quest turn in. Make your way to Trakanon's Teeth, and then to the Swamp of No Hope. Just barely inside the zone, there is a difficult to see tunnel to the left after the Ixar Marauders. At the end of this short tunnel is a froglock by the name of Dugraz. Hand him both the prod and the fang for the key to Charsis. Thank you all again for watching, I very much so enjoy making EverQuest videos. I've run into some hardware limitations, but I may have found a way to improve the video quality for future videos. Let me know in the comments if this video was helpful, and let me know what else you'd like to see. Later!